Hi, my name is Erica and I'm known as Lucid Dream Angel. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks for tuning into this video to learn about lucid dreaming and how to lucid dream. I want to make a quick disclaimer before we start that I will be talking about my own personal healing experiences, but I want you to take everything with a grain of salt and always listen to the advice of your medical doctor as well as seeking alternative healing modalities because whatever you can do to help you heal will help you to heal. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Okay, so welcome, even though we've already been talking. Welcome to uh, the podcast <laughs> and the channel. So um, I'll just give a very quick introduction. So this is Erica, and she's got a really interesting story. Basically, she is uh, going to be our, our lucid dreaming coach. So for everybody who's wanted kind of like one-on-one -on -one lucid dreaming tuition, coaching, advice, guidance, we're now going to be doing that. And Erica is going to be the lovely lucid dreaming coach who will help you with that because it's really important, especially if you're struggling or if you don't really know what you're doing wrong, you need um, guidance and one-on-one -on -one support. It's it's really nice to have that one-on-one -on -one connection and just coaching, tuition, you know, and a lot of people have been asking for it. And so now we're finally offering it. So in this video, I just want to kind of introduce Erica, have a little chat with her. She can uh, share more about her story and her background. And yeah, we can just get to know each other and uh, talk about everything, you know, lucid dreaming, life, how it's going to work. So yeah, welcome. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> so um, yeah, wh why don't you first maybe give like a quick introduction to yourself and your background? Yeah, so I started lucid dreaming a while ago, probably over six years ago. And the reason I started lucid dreaming was because I had an accidental astral projection experience. The day I had been telling myself, I don't want to be physical anymore. I don't want to be physical anymore. As if it was a mantra in my head all day on repeat. And then that night I accidentally found myself outside my body and it really shocked me and scared me. So I popped right back in. I felt the like paralysis and then I felt a deep peace knowing that, okay, I've had my own personal experience where now I know for sure <laughs> that like I don't die probably you know likely yeah. and then I did some research into astral projection and how um, scientists can stimulate different parts of the brain to actually cause you to have an astral projection and then other people's astral projection experiences that really just kind of for me proved that what I experienced was likely real and I knew because I had grown up in a like Christian household uh, that were very religious and they were very much against astral projection. I was afraid to astral project again, but I did want to do it again. But I knew that if I did it again, that there was a likelihood that I might run into entities or um, demons or things of this nature that I was told previously that I would run into in this kind of a realm, right? Even though that didn't happen during my experience, I was afraid that it could happen. So I wanted to avoid astral projection. And I thought, well, how can I like astral project again in a safe way and then I stumbled onto lucid dreaming people online were talking about it um, I think it was Koi and I learned from him and um, my boyfriend at the time was like that's not real lucid dreaming isn't real <laughs> these people are just trying to sell a course to you they're just trying to scam you you know so I never actually yeah. purchased anything or bought anything because of that and I wish I had because I could have probably done it a lot sooner so it ended up taking me a few years before I actually really got serious about like, no, I'm going to learn how to do this. I think it's real. Too many people are saying it is like for it to be a scam. And uh, originally I started out just talking about it with my coworkers. I was managing some cafes and I would just constantly talk about it and talk about it. Everything that I was reading in books and tips and tricks on how to do it. And I was finding actually that my coworkers were starting to lucid dream like right away that night, you know, they would tell me the next day their lucid dream and the crazy things that they did. Like one girl was like, I turned an ocean into cats, <laughs> you know, you oh, can wow. just do whatever you want. And I was so jealous. I was like, well, how come they can do it? <laughs> and all these tips and tricks are working for them, but it's not working for me. I've been like trying really hard desperately for three months and nothing had been working. So finally I gave up and I surrendered. And I went like, you know what brain, <laughs> like maybe you're more clever than I am and you have something in your subconscious that I don't know about. You can tell me when I'm lucid dreaming because like I've tried everything now at this point. I've tried like the finger in the hand method. I've tried changing things. You know, nothing was just working for me. So um, that surrendering that night, I had my first lucid dream in which I Felt like I was in real life, like you typically do in a dream. You know, I didn't realize I was dreaming. And I was walking outside to go ride my bike to work. <laughs> and then I looked over and I was like, there's also my bike. And I was like, but I don't have two bikes. So I'm looking at my bike that I'm about to get on. And I'm looking at another bike and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't have two bikes. How is this happening? And then I went, oh, I'm dreaming right now. And that's uh, kind of when I started like waking up 
because I got very excited, you know, and I kind of knew that that would happen. I'd read that it's possible that when you lose the dream for the first few times or first time, you wake up because you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. What am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you just pop awake. Um, so then it became about like stabilizing the dream. And the way that I would do that is I would just like touch and feel objects and try to smell things. Whereas before in my dreams, I couldn't do that. I didn't really, it was more of a mental visual imagery thing. I was seeing things, but I wasn't really like tasting food or like touching surfaces <laughs> in a way that I knew that I was dreaming, right? Or I wasn't trying to meet certain characters or ask for spirit guides or whatever. And uh, so lucid dreaming opened that door for me to like, quit having nightmares, to quit having insomnia. I was the kind of person that wanted to stay awake all night because I wanted to learn more. So lucid dreaming was a way for me to learn more without having to like yeah. sabotage my body, you know? And you actually get a deeper sleep when you lucid dream. And I started to find myself like meditating in the air like while I was lucid dreaming. That was just very peaceful. It's something that I can't do in real life so far, you know, just like out of the box things. Like I was learning how to fly and getting more comfortable with that and like gaining superpowers. That's really fun. And then eventually it became more about like healing myself of disease and like healing myself of childhood trauma, getting rid of like complex post-traumatic stress disorder through lucid dreaming. That's actually really interesting. And we will get onto that uh, later because there's a really interesting background to that. And um, yeah, it sounds like from our previous chat as well, you've done some really amazing things with lucid dreaming, not just flying around, for example, or touching surfaces or whatever in the dream. You've actually used it to do all of these really advanced, powerful things, you know, like healing and bits of manifestation. And so, yeah, we're going to get onto that. Definitely. That sounds really, really interesting. So can you tell me maybe a bit more about things, practical things that people can do in your experience that will make lucid dreaming easier and also things that most people make mistakes with? Some things like common mistakes, things people often get wrong with lucid dreaming. Practical things you could do the way I started out was every day asking myself like hour by hour, even setting an alarm in your phone, like, am I dreaming right now? <laughs> you know, And then just kind of being delusional about it. I actually like, I don't encourage people to disassociate, but it's almost like that in a way. You really do look around and you think, well, what if I am? <laughs> like, how would I know? You know, and then you have to test your reality and like figure out, well, can I poke my finger through the wall? <laughs> you know, because in a dream you can. Can I levitate off the ground? <laughs> and I mean, maybe someday we'll be able to do these things in our real waking world, but for mm -hmm. sure we can do it in our lucid dream. And so that's kind of how you can tell the difference between like, and answer that question, am I dreaming, right? So the idea is that you're priming your subconscious so that at nighttime when you go to sleep and you fall asleep, as you typically do as a beginner lucid dreamer, you will then ask yourself at some point in the dream, am I dreaming right now? And then you will do your reality check and then maybe realize that you are. And from there you can either take control of the dream or you can ask the dream to take control to help you in some way or shape or form, right? It's basically there to serve you. And um, you can take it in any direction you want to, which is fascinating. Uh, so like fantasy to healing to talking to deceased loved ones even. And regardless of whether or not we know or think that these things are real, they do have a benefit to the dreamer, right? Mm. So it's almost like going through hypnosis. Like if you wanted to quit smoking, for example, you could use your lucid dreams to do that. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds uh, of things like that. that can so be that's like dreams. the most practical thing that I could think of is to start off. If you can master that one question, I always say like, you can lucid dream because it really is about tricking your subconscious into like asking yourself, what is reality? <laughs> what is the nature of reality? Right? Like and questioning and being a scientist about it and getting observant and then forming a theory <laughs> and testing your hypothesis and then coming up with some conclusions, right? There's all sorts of methods you could do like wake back to bed. I did that a lot where you would go to bed and then it like a few hours before you wake up, maybe two hours before you wake up, you have an alarm set, you wake up, you stay kind of drowsy, maybe use the washroom, maybe you solve a math problem or a crossword puzzle and that stimulates the logical part of your mind because you've been in more of the right hemisphere of your brain, like the creative thinking throughout the night. And so now you want to stimulate that part that thinks, am I dreaming right now? Yeah. And so you go back to bed with that intention to lucid dream saying like, I am a lucid dreamer. Even if you're not, I lucid dream. I remember my lucid dreams when I wake up. And then that way you're more likely to lucid dream. So common mistakes that I find with people are um, negative beliefs or limiting beliefs. 
lack beliefs, right? Where they go, but I'm not a lucid dreamer. I don't even dream, you know, like um, I've never had a lucid dream or when I do, like I can't really stay in them. Just people telling themselves like old story, old news stuff instead of new story stuff, you know? So it's about scripting that reality for yourself where you're telling yourself and you're telling your subconscious mind, you know what? No, actually I'm the conscious mind. I'm in control of the subconscious mind. The subconscious is my servant. I'm a lucid mm. dreamer and I'm going to lucid dream no matter what it takes or like, and it's going to happen fast and easy for me, right? Like for me, maybe the reason why it didn't happen fast and easy for me is because at that time I had a different mindset and I didn't think, well, I thought to myself, these techniques aren't working for me. So therefore they didn't work for me. Right. So it's like, you really have to believe that it's going to work for you. Another common mistake I see is that people will think that it's something outside of them that can make them lucid dream. And while that can be true, like you can take mugwort tea or you can take herbal supplements and those will help you lose a dream, especially if you believe in taking supplements, right? Because that belief is a placebo basically that will stimulate it to happen. Like I believed that if I put mugwort under my pillow, that I would lose a dream. And so every time I would put mugwort under my pillow, I would lose a dream, even though I didn't drink it. I just believed that, oh, it's absorbing through my pillow and my head. And so it would happen, right? And then you take the mugwort away and then you start to believe that, no, it's my conscious mind that is creating the experience. And so therefore I can do it without any substances, then you can. So you can like hack your psyche that way if you don't have access to resources that maybe you wanna purchase or try. Yeah, I think people need to understand that it's not something reserved for special people or geniuses that everybody has the ability to tap into this like state of mind. And it's really just a brainwave frequency that you're tapping into. It's a relaxation technique. It's a hypnosis technique. You're basically going to self hypnosis and yeah, it's just a different brainwave state where you have to really relax your body and know. I think that's why a lot of meditators say like, be still and know, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think this, everything you just said there is one of the really powerful reasons why coaching is so important because this is like when you said about the self-limiting beliefs subconscious beliefs these things that often hold people back without them realizing that's not something that you can solve with let's say an ebook or a even a video because it's it's so different for every person like you know and you can't diagnose these things without having a a one-on-one chat with somebody like you know if somebody was to watch a video about a certain technique okay fine it might teach them how to do the technique how to lucid dream using that but if they have a limiting belief or a subconscious block, or, you know, something that's holding them back, the technique won't work for them because of the belief. So unless you actually identify the problem first and and work out what the person needs to focus on, they're wasting their, completely wasting their time. And this is the problem I have uh, with (laughs) some people who email me is like, the videos are great, but without knowing specifically what's holding the person back, you know, it's hard for them to progress. And this is why, well, firstly, it's why coaching is so important. And and another, another really common one actually is uh, is dream recall. A lot of people I find will try and lucid dream using a technique, but if they can't remember their dreams, again, they're sort of wasting their time because that's almost the first step is to learn how to remember your dreams first. Then you identify your limiting beliefs and work on those, you know, your subconscious blocks and all of this stuff. And then the cherry on the top of the cake is the technique or the timing, you know, the whatever it may be, the supplement. I mean, supplements should be like the absolute last thing that you should try one, uh, only after one, you've got all of the foundations set up properly. You know, you've identified the limiting beliefs, worked on your dream recall, you're sleeping consistently and well. And so, yeah, this really highlights, again, how important coaching is because without actually a one-on-one one chat with somebody you have no you know they they might have no idea what's actually stopping them so so that's really cool it's interesting you say that i think a lot of things that stop people are the spiritual or religious aspect of lucid dreaming the idea that god or like a higher power might be evil or sick or wrong or perverted because bad things happen in the world right so bad things are happening in your dreams so like what kind of god would create that for you right and um what i used to do to have dream recall was journaling So I would journal down my dreams in the morning right away, or I would talk with somebody about it, or I would record it in a video for myself that later on I could watch if I wanted to, or it was just a way of like putting it down and telling my brain, like, this is important to me, (laughs) you know, I want to lose the dream every night. And so I did for like a few years, actually, eventually to the point where I was able to like rest my head on the pillow at any time of the day and go straight into a lucid dream, which is like known as dream yoga or wild technique. 
So it mm. stimulates your pineal gland in a way that you start using your imagination more. Instead of reacting to the outer world, you're starting to project onto the outer world, right? Like your own fantasy and how you want things to be. And it's like futuristic thinking, right? <laughs> like, uh, But you can also go back into the past and heal things from the past through your lucid dreams. What am I trying to get out here? So we were talking about dream recall and that people have blocks. So the blocks... Mm -hmm. often come from blocking ourselves from like that higher power because we believe that maybe it's negative force you know so i used to like ask this higher power like i intend to have a dream that will help me to heal this you know or yeah. i intend to dream this xyz right and then i would fully believe that i was it was going to happen even if it didn't happen that night i would do the same thing over the next night i intend to dream this <laughs> you know <laughs> until it would happen for me and then i would have that dream that felt so real and so lifelike that it actually translated to the physical world. So for example, when I was going through like the stage four cancer and my doctor was saying, it's very unlikely that you'll be healed. Like here's your stack of papers that you need to sign for your grave and your will and like who are you gonna give your money to and where are you gonna be buried? Wow. You know, <laughs> and I would go home and go, okay, higher power, like why do I have this disease? What's wrong with me? Like what was the root of this disease? How did I get it? And then I would have a dream that would um, relate to why I had the disease. And it was actually that, well, you were abused as a child. Like you took on the beliefs that you were told by the person who was supposed to take care of you. All those negative things that they said to you, you started to say them to yourself. You took it on as your own voice as if it was you. And so you started beating yourself up and then it leaked into all these other areas of your life, right? That you're like not really aware of, but now you are because like, your lucid mm. dream is telling you so, you know, and then another night I would say, I want a healing dream. And then I would see my doctor in her office and we'd be having our meeting and she would say, you're in the fifth dimension right now. Cause this is the terminology that I was using at the time. She was like, you're in the fifth dimension right now. And you're actually already healed and it's going to translate to the third dimension. You don't know it yet, but you are healed. <laughs> and so I woke up from that dream going like, well, it could just be a dream or it could be real but I'm going to try to place more of my faith in the idea that it's real, even though like I'm skeptical, even though I'm afraid to go into this next meeting with my doctor who's telling me I'm dying. You know, so that day that I went to the meeting with the doctor, I'd never been in that room before or anything. Yeah. And it looked just like the room in my dream. <laughs> like, uh, like the whole scene was like, just like how I had imagined in my dream. She didn't tell me I was in the fifth dimension or in the third dimension. She doesn't use that terminology. Right. She doesn't believe in that stuff, but she told me like, wow, one session of chemo and it shrunk by half like this tumor that I had that was like the size of an orange basically she goes maybe you will be healed <laughs> you know? wow. and that's when I was like okay I think I'm on to something here and then I started you know experimenting as I told you with scans and like quantum physics and how that would translate to reality and how when I was getting a PET scan, there was a cell that like flashed in and out of existence basically on this PET scan and the doctor showed it to me. Yeah. And I think that that was happening because during the time of the scan, I was thinking about quantum physics. I was thinking about th things popping in and out of existence. And I was like, well, this moment I could both have the cancer and not have the cancer at the same time. I don't really know. It's like Schrodinger's cat, you know, alive and dead at the same time. <laughs> And he just thought it was fascinating. He's like, I have to show you this. Like, I've never seen this before. Like, look, it just like flashes in and out. <laughs> and I didn't want to tell him like my thoughts on that because I had already been in a way like labeled as a bit crazy for having refused treatment for so many years. But at that point, you know, I was just willing to give anything a go. So that's, that's how lucid dreaming can help someone, right? That's, that's so amazing. I love hearing stories like that. And uh, I imagine it must have been life-changing also, not only for you, but just also for the doctor to see something that he knows, according to all of his, you know, educational training should be impossible. And yet he's seeing it with his own eyes just flashing in and out like that. That must have been really quite amazing for both of you, really, to see that. Yeah, I almost wonder if I'll ever, like, meet him again in the future and <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> I yeah. I mean... Tell like why it happened <laughs> you know? yeah yeah for sure it must have had an impact on him wow okay so let's just kind of like slowly wrap things up here so i think it's very obviously the the healing and the manifestation is an incredible facet of lucid dreaming and a fascinating aspect of your background as well most people i imagine would fall into the category of complete beginners who just want to have their first lucid dream so can you maybe explain a little bit about kind of the journey you would take 
a complete beginner on, let's say, on their first session with you, if they if they click the button and book a taster session or you know one coaching session with you, what would be kind of the first things they can expect you to work on and on you know what you would talk about on that first call? Yeah, I would ask them more about like small talk, how their life is going, what's going on for them, why do they want to lucid dream? Often we want to lucid dream for various reasons. It could be that you know you're suffering from PTSD from like being in a war or like you're dealing with a healing experience or you just want to have fun. You just want to have more adventure in your life and you don't feel that in your daily life. So lucid dreaming is a way for of escape for you or a way for you to tap into like, how could my life be more exciting? So figuring out the why is really important because then your intention is that much stronger when you can have that emotional connection to why you want to lucid dream. So I would start with that first and then I would give them all the techniques that they need for lucid dreaming. So, and they could use all those techniques and then understand that they already are a lucid dreamer, start repeating those affirmations, you know, and then start having their lucid dream either that night or within like usually the first month. So most people that I've coached, like I've never had anybody not lucid dream. Everybody's always lucid dream. And the weird thing is like people usually have me come to their dreams. I find that very weird because I never remember coming to their dreams or like guiding them as a coach in their dreams. But they always tell me like, yeah, you were there and like you were teaching me stuff. It doesn't matter where in the world they live. Like they could live in Europe, but I live in Canada, right? And they'll be like, you came to my dreams. And, like you taught me how to like <laughs> lose the dream more. And I'm like, I don't even remember. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's kind of an interesting aspect is that I tend to come to people's dreams. So mm. that's pretty cool. Absolutely. When you connect with me, it's like connecting with my energy. And I yeah. guess that there's like the 3D me and then there's like this higher self me that can do all sorts of cool things and help you not just in your real life but also in your dream life. Yeah and I think I think that's right from an energetic perspective you're basically you're really affirming your intention when if let's say if somebody books a coaching call with you they're really kind of shouting to the universe I want to do this and I'm going to lo- lo- uh, learn how to lose a dream and energetically it's not just about you know the actual call and the conversation it's also the intention has to be strong enough for you to actually for somebody to actually book a call. It the intention is strong and it confirms it to the universe, and that's echoed back. And I think that's why a lot of your students have success, or you know why uh, you say most or all of the people you coach have a lucid dream is because of that intention. So what a lovely chat and s- such an interesting story. Basically, anybody who wants to book a, a coaching call, there should be a button. If you're on the website, at least there should be a button down below. Uh, if not, go to howtolucid.com forward slash coaching uh, or lucid hyphen coaching. One of the two. <laughs> and yeah please book a, a coaching call with uh, with erica and and think it's going to go very well yeah they will <laughs> <laughs> cool thank you, thank you so much thank you hi thank you for watching the video and please let us know if you have any questions or comments down below i wanted to make a quick disclaimer to let you know that i actually did take chemotherapy and it did help me. I believe that it was helping me. I was offered radiation and surgery. I did not take radiation nor surgery. I have been told that I am not healed of stage four lung cancer that I had. Uh, Last that I heard, I had a tumor in my lung. It's been about two years since I had denied treatment. I was offered hormonal treatment for life. I had a personal supernatural experience and that's what caused me to believe that I am healed. But everyone's journey is their personal journey their personal experience, and their health journey is their responsibility. I am not responsible for your health journey. You are not responsible for mine. So if you are seeking treatment, I do not encourage you to stop seeking treatment. Take all the healing modalities that you can. Anything that helps you to feel better is going to help you to feel better. So please, if your doctor is recommending something, I would just suggest that you listen to the advice of your doctor and seek alternative healing modalities as well. Thank you.